Good morning. I'm Adam Rothschild from Voxel, and I'm joined here by Nathan Patrick from Sonic.net and Alex Pilosov from Polysoft. And we are presenting on passive Metro WDM, aka capacity on the cheap. How it works? Well, put simply, we have single mode fiber with multiple wavelengths, also split into what some might call colors or lambdas coexisting separately. We use pluggable optics as an enabler, and we use low cost passive optical equipment, particularly gray market, to multiplex it. One that we are not talking about is proper active WDM systems. There are a number of vendors out there. You can give them a lot of money, Cisco, Sienna, Movaz, whatever. Give them a lot of money, they'll give you a proper solution. That's beyond the scope of our discussion because we're trying to keep things as lean and profitable as possible. As for why WDM in the Metro? Well, put simply, the cost of dark fiber IRUs is quite reasonable, often comparable to the NRC and MRC costs for a gigabit wave or other lit service between carry hotels in a given city. The solution is low in CapEx and OpEx. It's a good tool for fiscally responsible regional networks looking to upgrade backbone capacity. And with that said, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Alex, who will be talking more about the implementation. Um, so uh, what, does, uh, what exactly is WDM? You can think of it as uh, basically a prism. You have uh, mixed light coming in, and uh, it separates by wavelengths, by the color, and gives you multiple uh, different channels that you can use for different signals. Um, we can, you can do it with multiple, multiple options. We are talking about uh, just uh, doing passive systems uh, where the optics is uh, pluggable and uh, uh, there is all, all, the, uh, all the equipment is basically passive. Uh, these are some pictures of uh, the equipment that we have. Uh, these are pictures of uh, components on top uh, for uh, the, the passive filters. And on the bottom, you have uh, assembled panels, which have a single uh, fiber coming in, uh, dark fiber, and uh, splits into different uh, uh, wavelengths that go into uh, different GBICs for, uh, for actual uh, equipment. Uh, so what options uh, uh, do you have for WDM? Uh, the first one is uh, what uh, people usually start with. It uh, doubles your capacity on existing dark fiber. If you already have dark fiber and you're using it for a single circuit, you can very easily and uh, at a very low cost double the capacity. <coughs> Proper term for this is wide wavelength division multiplexing. This is usually also referred as GWDM and G stands for gather. Um, the wavelengths used in this, in this are 1310 and 1550, which are the, basically the LX and ZX wavelengths. So the transceivers are easily available, the transceivers are very cheap, the splitters are cheap. Um, you double your capacity at a very low cost, and you can use this for, uh, and for 10 gig just as well. Uh, the next option is uh, CWDM, which is coarse. Uh, each of the CWDM channels is 20 nanometers wide. You have eight channels normally used. <clears throat> uh, so you can have eight gigabit channels per uh, single pair of fiber. Uh, the cost for the passive equipment is about $1,000 per strand per end. Uh, cost for each GBIC is about $1,000, between $300 and $1,000, depending on the vendor that you are buying it from. A uh, couple of problems is that uh, there are no uh, Zen packs, so you are limited to eight gigabits with this. Uh, the next option is dense wave division multiplexing. Dense means each of the channels is uh, far narrower than coarse uh, uh, channel. Uh, for example, if coarse channel was 20 nanometers, uh, dense channel is 0 0.8 nanometers. So you have 24, uh, roughly 24 dense channels per single coarse channel. The capacity, obviously, with DWDM is far higher. Uh, the standard systems are about 160 channels. You can do 10 gigabits on each of the channels. Uh, so total 1.6 terabits of capacity on a single pair. Uh, and this can be expanded uh, four to eight times uh, with uh, some of the newer equipment. Uh, the problem with DWDM is that uh, general equipment is, uh, particularly the active equipment, the active optics, 
are very expensive because of the uh, higher tolerance requirement. The uh, 0 0.8 nanometers require uh, thermal stabilization uh, to, for the laser to keep the uh, wavelengths. Uh, the benefit of the uh, wavelength division multiplexing is uh, uh, you can easily scale. Uh, you can start with uh, two-channel system, then uh, put in additional filters and extract uh, additional eight channels, and then put in DWDM system to extract additional 160 channels. And uh, the scalability is more or less linear. Uh, the tools that we use to uh, to test the system and to implement the system. Uh, basically, the most important tool is uh, optical power meter. Uh, you measure the output on each of the channels, and that's how you troubleshoot, troubleshoot the system. The next uh, most important tool is spectrum analyzer. Uh, you plug it into uh, the dark fiber, and you see what uh, frequencies are uh, currently in use on, the, on dark fiber, and uh, what is the power level of each of those frequencies. Uh, some of the uh, problems that we experienced uh, during the implementation of the system. Um, commercial systems uh, for passive, uh, passive uh, multiplexing are uh, not, uh, not readily available. And if they are, they are uh, order of magnitude more expensive than the systems that we uh, build ourselves. Uh, they require the knowledge for to put in a WDM system is generally not available or for, you know, it's not considered to be network engineering knowledge, so uh, it's an intersection of uh, fields of fiber and uh, uh, network engineering in order to put uh, a complete system. Uh, the vendors for SFP uh, uh, and GBIX uh, optics, uh, we see that there is a lot of problems with quality control, so we have, uh, we've had problems simply because the vendors uh, don't have the working uh, active optics. Uh, the equipment for testing is also uh, not uh, not free, and uh, some it's a significant part of the cost is your testing equipment that you need to have. And uh, obviously, the next uh, the important thing is that what happens if um, the engineers that develop the system and tested the system gets hit by a bus? Uh, who is going to be able to uh, maintain the system? There are some exotic options uh, that uh, uh, I'm not going to talk about. It's maybe a future nano talk. Um, the bottom line. So you can have a two gigabit system over uh, dark fiber for about $1,000. You can have eight gigabit system for between five and $10,000. And similarly for a 20 gigabit system, if you're doing uh, 10 gig, uh, the 10 gig will scale very linearly to uh, multiple 10 gig channels. And each of those is about 10 times less than commercial uh, Sienna or MOVAS system. Uh, these are the vendors that we have used uh, um, in our, uh, system, in our uh, network. So if you are looking to re-implement uh, what, what we did, you, we can we suggest that you, you use that. So any questions? Uh, Martin says, what do you do for timing? I didn't, you didn't mention like a bits clock or any kind of timing, and I'm not sure. I know you need it. I just didn't see it up there. Timing? Yeah, network timing. Don't you have to time? Uh, no, there is no need for timing because each of the channels is completely separate, and uh, it, this is just a GBIC, uh, so there is no specific timing needed to uh, run this. Uh, Mike Hughes from Lynx. We have some experience of uh, networking this way. Um, one of the things to particularly look at if you're trying to do anything like uh, WWDM or go bi-directional on brand of fiber is to look out for back reflections. Um, we had a system that was um, based on running bi several channels bi-directional over single fiber. And what would happen is the transceiver at one end would see itself reflected back yes, to itself you, and declare you, link up. You've got to be very careful with isolation and your components to stop back reflections. Well, if we've had this problem, the answer is uh, don't run two wavelengths uh, bi-directional. Um, so you know, don't do that. Yeah. Uh, you can do that uh, using circulators, but that is kind of, uh, again, it is possible, and I would love to talk about it, but we are out of time.